Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about the stacking of the Peltier coolers. So first uh, I will show you some calculations and uh, we will have some sort of brainstorming and then I will test uh, the calculated things or something like that in reality. So we will see what kind of numbers we can get as compared to our calculations. So first uh, let's see why do we want to stack these Peltiers. Uh, what are the advantages, uh, disadvantages, limitations, and so on. So let's think about uh, uh, the main question. So let's first look at these performance charts and see what we can uh, get here. So as you can see, uh, the most important thing uh, for us is the DT now, because uh, we want to reach very low temperatures, right? So then we, we sort of want to maximize this DT. Uh, of course within some certain limitations and you can see that uh, all these charts are ending at around 70 80 degrees Celsius with the DT so we can note down that uh, we will use let's say DT equals uh, 70 degrees Celsius so then what this means is that uh, the temperature difference between the hot side and the cold side will be 70 degrees Celsius so if we say that uh, the hot side is, let's say, uh, 50 degrees Celsius, uh, then by using these two numbers, we can get the cold side. And that is basically the TH minus DT. And in our case, this will be minus 20 degrees Celsius, right? So then we say that if we apply those uh, certain values, current and voltage, uh, which needed to be uh, reached or applied to get to this uh, 70 degrees DT, then we will have uh, minus 20 degrees on the uh, cold side. But at what cost? So let's say we choose our most powerful unit here. So we go for 70, and uh, this is the 50 um, 15 amperes uh, unit. And then we see that this is pretty much uh, 16.5 volts. This will be important. And uh, here we are at, of course, uh, 15 amps with this. So this is the black curve. And uh, that means that if we are at 15 amperes and the DT is chosen to be uh, 70 degrees Celsius, then we can go to our performance chart and uh, do the same practice or exercise. So 70 and then 15 amperes. And we see that this is roughly, let's say, 17 or maybe 18 watts now it doesn't matter uh, so yeah it's roughly 18 watts of cooling power so if you want to maintain minus 20 degrees on the surface of your cold side of the TEC 715 then you can only provide uh, 17 to 18 uh, watts of uh, cooling power which is very low uh, for purposes for different purposes so you will see that uh, very low cooling power can be achieved if you have large DT and the other way around is also uh, valid. So if you want to reach very high cooling power as compared to its own performance of the given um, TEC uh, unit, then uh, you have to sacrifice the DT. So either you get uh, very low in temperature, but you don't, uh, you are not able to cool anything or you go to very high uh, cooling rate, uh, cooling performance, but you are not really able to create a large uh, temperature difference between the cold side and the hot side. But uh, now we want to stack uh, two or three or more units. So we have to think about uh, these things a little bit because when you want to stack, uh, let's say now let's stick with two units, uh, the following things uh, are happening and uh, let me just do some drawing with the two units and uh, I can explain uh, this in a better way so here is our sandwich and uh, then I just uh, separate these things to like subgroups so this will be one of the Peltier cooler which is the top and uh, the other Peltier cooler, which is the bottom Peltier cooler, and this is our uh, heat sink. So I just write it down. So this is the heat sink, which can be 
uh, air or water based it depends on your budget or your uh, available things but uh, this is the heat sink so what happens is that uh, let's say we have some object here something we want to cool it down and then uh, we want to uh, reach some certain temperature so what should happen here is that the heat should travel from the body or from the object to the heat sink right and uh, that has to be carried or pumped uh, across these two stages of uh, stacks or state yeah two stages so what happens here is that uh, uh, first the heat from the object is carried from uh, which is in contact with the cold side of the top Peltier unit is carried to the hot side of the top Peltier unit which is in thermal contact with the top or cold uh, side of the bottom Peltier unit and then it gets uh, pumped further down uh, the heat uh, to the bottom of this unit which is the hot side and then that is in thermal contact with the uh, heat sink which does the ultimate job and carries away the heat of this unit so the bottom unit and plus the top unit plus the body and of course plus the environment but now we say this is not true in reality but we say this is like a textbook example that the effect of the environment is negligible but in reality you lose let's say 5 to 10 watts just because of the uh, insufficient insulation I mean we are now talking about home experiments and uh, I'm I'm not sure if you can reach very good uh, insulation except you have very nice tools I'm happy if you can uh, insulate your Peltier cooler better than that but uh, a general experiment experience is that uh, you cannot reach uh, very good insulation so you lose roughly 5 to 10 watts depending on the performance of your cooling uh, uh, unit of course so we saw that uh, the heat uh, jumps through several stages of uh, this kind of uh, coolers but what happens here so uh, you have to run these two units so to run them you have to provide a current and you have to provide uh, voltage right and then here let's call this i1 and u1 and this will lead to a, a power so this will be p1 and then by using this power we will be able to uh, provide some sort of cooling power so let's call it q1 and the same happens here but now let's uh, mark it with the number two so i2 times u2 uh, i remove this before it becomes a square uh, that equals to p2 and that p2 will uh, provide you a q2 uh, cooling power so when you try to see how much cooling power you need uh, on your heat sink or cooling performance in order to remove the heat from the hot side you have to consider both terms so for example if I just take one unit uh, first this this will be the heat sink now it's uh, HS and then this is the total uh, Peltier so this this box contains both the, both the hot and the cold side so then this has the p performance uh, or power sorry uh, which comes from the u uh, times i plus it has the q which is the cooling power so basically the heat which is let's say removed from the object so the heat which is pumped from the cold side to the hot side and this these two terms will appear on the hot side which is in contact with the heatsink so the heatsink has to deal with this sum so let's uh, do a quick example here uh, and uh, see what we get so uh, let's use the numbers above here so we try to reach the highest possible uh, DT uh, with this well, now we are just talking about uh, this unit 
and we are using the 15 amperes so we are running at uh, i equals 15 and then we saw from this that uh, the voltage is roughly uh, 16.5 volts right so if we take the product of this 247.5 watts so this is just the heat uh, basically just the heat generated by the operation of this thing and then we have to read the chart so uh, follow me uh, we are here so we said that 15 amperes 70 degrees dt so we are at let's say 18 uh, so q equals 18 watts so if we just uh, add the, these two numbers that is 265.5 watts so this means that the heat sink uh, has to deal with this much heat load so this is this is quite high and this is just one uh, TEC 12715 and we want to stack them so that's quite a quite a big deal so what can we do and how can we approach this kind of problem so I was thinking and I thought that okay we can have like a top-down method so we start from the top unit so let's say we have a two-step uh, uh, stacking so we are using two units so we when we use the top-down we first pick the top unit and we try to maximize uh, the uh, temperature difference there and then we pick the uh, Peltier cooler to the bottom according to that kind of performance or we can uh, go bottom up let's say so we pick uh, some uh, relatively reasonable uh, cooling performance uh, which we think that it will be enough and that will be for the bottom unit so the one which is in contact with the heatsink and then based on the available cooling power uh, we can pick the top unit so we can see that let's say in the bottom we can remove 100 watts of uh, cooling power so we see that okay now we have 100 watts so this uh, P plus Q should be less than 100 watts on the top unit and we can see the performance charts that uh, what unit can provide uh, the best uh, DT for 100 uh, watts and uh, again you have to consider both I times U plus the cooling power because you pump the heat through this thing uh, as well so that that's also in the equation and uh, now let's now just let's uh, go with the top-down uh, method uh, just for uh, fun so I just write it down so we pick the top down so first we pick the top unit and uh, I want to go with the uh, 3 ampere unit because uh, that that's a good uh, uh, good uh, unit for this kind of uh, calculation because now we don't want to remove heat so we don't want to cool really but we want to reach very high uh, cooling uh, uh, we want to reach very high differences between the hot and the cold side so we want to have very cold uh, cold side and the uh, low uh, current unit is good for this because uh, first of all, we run the unit at very low currents as compared to the other units. So the Joule effect and uh, the P equals uh, I times U will be uh, small. And uh, also the cooling performance of this, partly because of the unit itself and partly because of the high DT, uh, the cooling will be very uh, low so the Q term uh, in the top part will be also low and that's very good for us now so we pick the top unit and that uh, will be the 12703 and uh, then we try to maximize the delta T so let's go down to this chart and uh, let's see what we have first here so let's uh, say that 70 uh, degrees Celsius so we pick this and we go here so uh, we see that uh, we apply 4 amps and at 4 amps uh, we are again uh, roughly around 16.5 volts so 
now you can see the differences between this and the previous example because uh, in the in this example uh, in the top uh, right uh, corner uh, at 16.5 volts we were at 15 amperes so more than three times or almost four times uh, of this value so you can see that the p equals i times u is significantly higher so we picked i equals uh, four amps and then because of this the u will be 16.5 volts so if we calculate the p from this that is 4 times 16.5 which is uh, 66 watts so we have uh, 66 watts from the p and then we have to see what happens at 70 degrees uh, with the cooling uh, performance chart so we are somewhere here and that is let's say uh, 5 watts so we, uh, we picked the 70 degrees and the maximum current, which is 4 amperes, and then we saw that the QC. So the QC at uh, 4 amps and uh, DT equals 70 degrees Celsius is roughly 5 watts. So uh, in total, uh, let's call this Q tot, uh, will be 5 watts plus 66 watts so this is uh, 71 watts right so now we know that the bottom part of this uh, uh, stacking has to deal with 71 watts so let's uh, pick the bottom now and now i put two charts here uh, because i was thinking can we do three or can we do only two uh, stages so now we see that, okay, we have 70 watts uh, to be pumped away. So I, I just write the numbers here. So here, the maximum heat load uh, can be basically 5 watts and nothing else, because otherwise we don't reach the, this delta T. So the QC is basically goes here. So from the cold side uh, to the to the hot side it goes there and we also have the p term here so the p plus uh, q appears here as i noted here and that is uh, 71 watts so that has to be uh, carried across this and then now here we will have 71 watts plus of course the p2 uh, plus the qc2 and that will appear, of course, in the heatsink as well. But now let's see uh, which unit between the 8 and uh, 15 ampere units uh, can provide us 71 watts with the highest uh, performance, uh, which is now the temperature difference for us. So here, uh, what we do, we go backwards. So we pick our, let's say, 71 watts uh, somewhere here and we draw a line. So we see that uh, in order to reach 71 watts of cooling power we have to apply at least 6 amperes because that's the first uh, line which can be crossed. These lines below this uh, and these curves uh, cannot be crossed with this 70 watts. So if you apply 4 watts, uh, 4 amperes you cannot reach 71 watts of cooling power. That's, that's what it is. And then uh, you can see that if I go here this is like two watts of uh, sorry two uh, degrees uh, temperature difference and then this is 10 degrees temperature difference and this is 15 degrees temperature difference so for example if we take that our hot side is at 50 degrees and uh, we can go and bring it down to uh, from 50 to 35 then we go from 35 to to minus 35 if we have this uh, 70 degrees uh, so that's not so good so I, I say that uh, we don't use the 8 uh, ampere here because we cannot provide too much DT and also if we would put this uh, at let's say as an intermediate stage so we would use three of these units then uh, that uh, would not be so good because then we apply high current here 8.2 amps and that is like uh, times 16 uh, sorry uh, more like 14 so 
that is uh, somewhere around 102 watts or 105, something like that. Uh, that's that's too much uh, because 105 uh, plus this, that's uh, 170 watts, and that would already uh, max out the next stage. So instead of uh, putting this as an end or intermediate stage, uh, we go up to the 12715 uh, and we go again here, look at this, 71 watts. So we draw the line and see what happens. So uh, you can see that we can go with 6 amps which will provide us, let's say, 7 degrees DT. And we can go with 9 amps, that's 25. We can go with uh, 12, and that is like 36. And then we can go with 15 amps, that is 41. So let's say that uh, we want to go with the maximum uh, possible uh, performance, so we go with 41. So we picked that uh, the the bottom unit will be the TEC12715 at uh, I equals 15 amps and uh, then the Q uh, C at this is 71 watts. Actually I would uh, shoot about this at least by 10-15 watts but now uh, we do like this so we don't care about the losses and stuff. But uh, this is just for exercise. You can do it yourself by overestimating the the power coming from the top unit, and then you just search for let's say 80 watts instead of that. Like I, I just show it to you. So here uh, the minimum is 70, maximum is uh, 105 between these two ticks. So this is roughly at uh, 87. So this this could be nice for us. So we can barely reach this with. Uh, uh, six amperes, so there is no uh, DT basically, so we can just pump the heat. So in this case when you have zero then this unit would not do anything else, just it would act as the heat sink. So that, that doesn't mean anything to us. But at 9 amps we have like 19 degrees DT, 30 degrees at 12 and uh, roughly 36 at uh, 15 amps. So let let's uh, let's do like that. So I just remove this, and I say that okay, we pump away 27 watts. So we pick the top line here, here, and we pick the 15 amperes, and then at that this value where the QC is 87 watts, uh, the the DT is roughly 36 uh, degrees Celsius. So if we again say that the hot side is 50 here and uh, the DT is 36 degrees, that means that the cold side is uh, roughly 14 degrees Celsius. So that means that the next stage will start from 14 degrees. So here we can write that this is 14 degrees Celsius. And here we created 70, 70 degrees Celsius. So basically we have uh, the 70 degrees Celsius. So let's say this is the DT2 and uh, TC1 uh, because this is the cold side temperature of the uh, bottom unit is 14 degrees so something like this and this is roughly minus 56 degrees Celsius so if everything works well if I stack these two units uh, together and I use these kind of uh, settings for the current and uh, for the voltage we roughly have minus 56 degrees Celsius and at what cost? So we haven't calculated that. But if I go back to this curve and I pick the 15 ampere uh, current and we say that the DT is 36, so we are roughly here, and I go here, and that is 15 volt. So if I just continue from here, 
15 volt, so we have uh, P2 equals 15 times 15, and uh, that is 225 uh, watts. So that means that on this part, now we can write out the full equation. So P1 plus Q1, so this is the heat that should be carried away by the heat sink. P1 plus Q1 plus P2 plus Q2, which equals, let me continue here, is, let's say, let's see, let's see. So we have 66 watts plus we have a very low cooling power, so 5 watts, plus here we have 87 watts of cooling power, plus uh, we have 225 uh, watts of uh, heat. And uh, this 87 watt term is not maybe not entirely true, because uh, the 87 watt means that the heat this is the pumped heat. Of course, if there is no, if this heat is not available on the other side to be carried away, then of course this will be lower and then your wall calculation changes slightly. But uh, we have already 71 watts from the terms that appear in reality. So one term from the current uh, running through the device and the other is the heat uh, pumped from this. But also we have some losses because of the insulation and stuff like that. So I can imagine that uh, the 87 watts is available on the cord side of the uh, bottom unit. So then uh, we have to summarize these uh, four numbers and uh, this is 383 watts. It's a huge amount of uh, power. So this poor guy here on this side has to deal with 383 watts. I can tell you that most of the CPU coolers are rated for less than half of this. They are usually around uh, 150 watts. If you see these numbers on the packaging of the CPU coolers, they write something like TDP equals 150 or 100, so sometimes it's even worse. But this is uh, 383, so you would need like uh, two, two and a half uh, CPU coolers to be able to remove the heat uh, properly from, from this side. But uh, instead of uh, using an air cooler, so this gives me some suggestion that I should not use the air cooler, but uh, I should use the water cooler because of the heat capacity of the water. So maybe I can, at least in the beginning of the experiment, I can keep this temperature uh, low. And uh, I was actually cheating because last night I put uh, a two liter uh, bottle of water in my fridge so we can start from lower than ambient temperature and I will do like that so what I will do in my experiment now uh, I note down all these numbers of course and uh, I put together my uh, two step or two stage uh, stack and uh, the bottom will be the uh, 15 amp unit and the top will be the 3 amp uh, unit like this and we will run the experiment. I will try to uh, insulate this uh, system very well so I will try to use some foam everywhere and maybe some uh, piece of cloth and uh, stuff like that so I want to reduce uh, the uh, let's say power which is leaching in into the different parts of this uh, system as much as possible and then we will see what is the top temperature and I will monitor the temperature of the water, the ambient temperature, I will use two different types of uh, thermometer to monitor the top uh, surface so we will see if there is some significant difference between the temperatures with uh, different uh, thermometers and so on. But what we expect is uh, we can go below uh, 56 or we can go below minus 50 degrees, let's say, because there will be some losses and uh, I, I can imagine that uh, this calculation is not the most accurate, but it uh, shows you the basic principles. So just again, uh, when you go like top-down uh, method, 
then first you see what is your top stage and we are now assuming that we are using uh, two stages so I write it here uh, if I could write so two stages and uh, the, we first pick the top stage because then we know what kind of heat we should uh, carry away uh, with the bottom stage so we can pick the performance of the bottom stage accordingly and then of course we want to get as close as possible to this so we don't want to unnecessarily uh, remove more heat or, or something like that or try to remove more heat so if we go back to the performance chart here we will not run it at uh, only 9 amperes because then the DT would be only just 20 uh, degrees Celsius or 19 degrees so we will go up to the maximum 15 amperes and then we can reach uh, 36 degrees uh, Celsius in temperature difference so therefore uh, the cold side of this will be 14 degrees instead of uh, let's say 30 degrees if we use the different uh, currents so yeah so we decided the top stage and then we go to the bottom stage and we pick that according to basically this number and what we, you have to really really consider that uh, on the hot side of each Peltier unit it's not only the QC that appears the QC comes from outside basically so you remove the heat basically let's say there is a heat sink on this uh, part and then the heat sink is in contact with the environment so you remove the QC basically from the environment and that appears on your uh, cold side here and that is being pumped from the cold side to the hot side so that one just one thing that appears on the cold side maybe I haven't emphasized this in my previous videos enough but this is just uh, one thing so then you also have to consider that you are running this uh, device at very high currents and very high voltages I mean not very high voltages but uh, high enough uh, to run this device with a, with a big uh, power so then uh, this term also has to be considered of course it's part of the uh, it's part of the device so what appears on your uh, hot side is always the product uh, so the sum of these two unit uh, things so this is basically the Q it will be the QC uh, I just write it down and that is what you get from the chart and the P is this term so that is uh, decided or determined by the uh, product of the current and voltage that you are using to run the device and then if you stack them then you have to carry these two things to the next stage and the next stage should be able to remove this product plus uh, the the heat sink should also remove the so here the the very very bottom or final stage the the heat sink should be also should also be able to remove uh, so the product of this so P1 plus Q1 what I wrote here plus P2 plus Q2 so then you see that you get this uh, ginormous numbers so yeah so now we could see some numbers and I think I talked enough in this part I hope it was not boring and it was useful somewhat so now I will jump to the experimental part which I expect to be more uh, interesting and then we will see if it works in the reality as I calculated it or not. So let's see what happens in reality. <laughs> 